Psalm 78, Mishil of Asaph. Mishil is an instruction. So this is an instructive and a history psalm. You know, if you're, one of the things you're to learn is you're to learn history. Give ear, O my people. O my people would be the Jews. There's a Jew writing, written to the Jewish people. I mean, some people would think they're talking to Americans, but that's not the case. To my law, incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. Well, who did that? According to John chapter 10, verse 6 and 1625. This is Jesus. You run this with John chapter 1, my people, and he came unto his own, his own received them not. So this is Jesus Christ speaking. Prophecy. It's one of the prophecies. One of the 48 prophecies of Jesus' first coming. So when he said, I will open my mouth in parables, you run that to Matthew 13, 35. That's exactly what he said. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from the, from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Lord. And his strength, his wonderful works that he had done. It's recorded in the Bible for the Jews to know what God did for them. You are to remember, as I said last night, we are to do the Lord's uh, Supper to remember what he's done for us, to remember his death, burial, and resurrection, and to remind ourselves that he's coming back. That's absent from the Catholic Mass. You ask any person who takes part in the Mass, you know, are you doing this for the Lord to return, huh? What? For he established a testimony in Jacob. Jacob is from Abraham, Isaac, and appointed a law in Israel. The law was given to Israel, Exodus 20, which he commanded our fathers, Jews, that they should make them known to their children. You know, you are charged to teach your children about God. Every father that is listening to this, that is a father or a father to be, or may be a father, you are charged to teach your children about God, and if you give them to the public school system, look where it's going today. Oh, the Sunday school teacher, one hour out of how many hours in the week? Oh, the preacher, three hours, four hours with Sunday school? And it's not even an hour because it's usually about 40, 30 to 45 minutes. Some churches, you're lucky if you get a 10-minute message. And then, with that, you don't even know if they're paying attention. You know, the, listen, I'm talking to saved people. Father, you better understand that when you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, you will give an account of what you taught your children. And some of you fathers out there have taught your children more about hunting and, and sports than anything in the Bible and God and Jesus Christ. To your shame and to your loss. That the generation to come might know them. Even the children shall be born, who shall rise and declare them from their children. Let me ask you a question. How many children today in 2014 that are in Bible believing churches, how many of them know the stories 
of Samson, of David, of Goliath, of Adam. How many foolish people have gone to see this stupid Noah movie and now believe that's how the Noah was of the Bible? Oh, we got Patches the Pirate, we got Pin the Tail on Peter, and we got Hunting for Easter Egg, and we got all kinds of things, but we ain't got the Bible. I seen one time in a, in a children's uh, uh, group, whatever you want to call it, I seen them out there doing a cheerleader dance. What, what's that have to do with God? You know why I am against Patches the Pirate and all that other stuff? Out there? That may be good. All right, you do it home. I'll tell you why I'm against that. Because the Bible stories are not in the Bible. You say, wait a minute, Bible story? That's what they claim to be. I'm sorry. What's wrong with the Bible? Why can't you get the stories from the Bible to teach your children? We have started from Genesis 1. We are in Psalm 78. I didn't have to go to no extra literature. And let me throw something else in there. As a father, what if you got a perverted Bible that is not the King James Bible? You are teaching your children a lie. Huh? What are you going to do over there when, Sin, when King Saul has an attitude problem with his son? Are you going to teach your son that little word there, this SOB? Oh, that one, that's in there. That's how I got my grandma out of that Bible. I showed her that SOP. Man, after that, she threw that Bible in the garbage. Fathers, you are in charge not only to teach your children, but, but Paul writes to the church and says, if a woman has a question, she's to ask her husband. You are given a charge to study to show thyself approved under God, a workman that he is not to be ashamed, rightly divine. Pastors, you need to teach your people what the Bible, what God expects from them. Get off the dead lily plants and the dead Easter bunnies and get in the Bible and speak the truth. You'll be held accountable too. That they might set their hope in God. What, 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 what? You are to teach your children what God has done. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. When I think, I'm not sure, I'm not a medical doctor, but when I think my boy is healed, I mention in prayer with my children to know. Why? That they may hope in God that maybe one day they're going to have a medical problem or situations or not. Listen, if God took care of my dad and I'm saved just like my dad, God will take care of me. You were a teacher. Remember, way back then, we had a problem, but God got us through. I wonder what they're teaching the synagogues today in America in 2014. By the way, you do know that Paul says that the veil is upon them when they read it today. Because they haven't believed in the Messiah. And not forget the works of God, and but keep his commandments. They are to be reminded what God did to them in, e in Egypt. All the protection. How God loved them. You know, when, when the Gentile boasts of America, the Jews should stand up and say, Hey! You should see what God did to us. You know, you're to teach your children about the about the pilgrims when they came over here with the Geneva Bible, that there was an entire Indian nation completely wiped off, I believe it was by a disease. And what was left behind for those pilgrims was a village and food. Is that being taught in the schools? Little girl was asked, well, what did the pilgrims do with their guns? Oh, they went and shot Indians. Oh, really? Really? 
And what were the Pilgrims out looking for? Looking for them to, 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 to kick the ball over the field goal, I guess. What year was the Pilgrims? Huh? Isn't it funny? It was it was nine years, the fruits of the Spirit, before the King James Bible? And might not be as their fathers. Okay, not ready. You don't teach history like history is. Church, born again father. You don't teach your children what the Bible and what God has done. You want to see what goes on in the churches? A stubborn and rebellious generation. If that's not today, what is? You know why children shooting each other? Because you're not teaching about the fear of God. You're not teaching about what God does with people with, who deal with sin. When was the last time that, that parents brought their disobedient, rebellious child to the principal of the school and said, this child's rebellious and, and I, we can't do nothing and he's a, he's a drunkard and, and he's, he's sinful and they said, everybody, we're going to have an assembly. Little Johnny is a, is a wicked boy and we're going to stone him to death. Hey! Let's change the game. Go to hell. Collect $500 and get your medical taken care of. Get your teeth fixed and, and get warm and get AC and get uh, heating and get new clothes and everything like that. The only thing you lose in jail is your liberty. That's it. Everything else is gained. There are people that get out of jail and run right back to, to, to get back in jail. That set not their heart are right. What's that mean? Well, Lord willing, if we go down Saturday's afternoon and we preach and teach about Jesus Christ and hell and the Bible, everybody comes up to us and with their heart they believe in righteousness and with the mouth their confession is made unto salvation. Yeah, right. Maybe a long time ago in America, but not today. There was a time in America where a guy was going to shack up with another w a woman that was not his wife. He'd do it in secret. They do it on television today. Whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Listen, even the churches are not steadfast with God. Their music, their programs, their preaching, their Bible, their conduct. Because there's no history. In America, the public schools, they're rewriting the history. So we don't offend people. They have taken the word of God and changed it. Additions, subtractions, and footnotes. The children of Ephraim, that was the, the, the child of one of the children, the two children, Joseph, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. Oh, that's not what you're supposed to do. Why did they turn back? Because they forgot that God's victorious. They must not have been told about Jericho. They must not have been told about Ai. They must not have told that only one war, Joshua being with God, he lost of all the wars. They must not have learned when Moses hung up his hands, there was victory. When he put them down, there was no victory for Israel. They must not have known that. They must not have known that God was a God of war and a God of victory. They must not have been told those that are, are for the Jews will get a blessing. Those that curse the Jews will get a curse. They must not have forgot that. No one wants to told them. They kept not the covenant of God. And refused to walk in his law. So if you don't do what God tells you to do, you're going to get no victory. 
victory today in this period right now before the rapture of the churches. God's commandment, God's covenant is to believe on the way, the truth, and the life. The Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, the blood sacrifice upon Calvary's tree that they buried him and he arose from the grave according to scriptures. And if you don't do that, you don't put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ today. You're not going to have no victory. Oh, I got this big corporation. Yeah, wait till you stand before God the judge and see what you got. With your little hiney naked. And God reveals everything you've done. To all the world. And to all the saints. And forget his works. Christian, are you in tr turmoil and trouble today? Do you think that God has, has forsaken you? Do you think God doesn't love you anymore, Psalm 77, Christian? Well, let me tell you what the cure is. I can write you a prescription. Now, when I say prescription, everybody's ears just pop. Oh, I'm going to get a pill. No, I'm not going to give you a pill. I'll tell you what it is. You forgot the works of God. Sit down and write down on a piece of paper, starting from your salvation, what God's done for you in your life, rather than what he has not done for you. Mark all the victories and all the pluses that God has done for you. And don't forget to add every single day that you've waken out of bed and you put your feet on the ground and able to dress yourself. Well, I'm in a wheelchair. You got eyesight? Well, I don't. Can you hear? You mean to tell me God hasn't done nothing for you? You better check and see if you're saved. Because if you're saved, you're a child of God. You think your father's going to leave you desolate? That's Satan that will do that. John 8, 44. And his wonders. God has done no wonders for you. I hardly believe it. I can, I can buy, do 48,000 million tapes of what God has done for me. Testimonies of near death. No, I didn't go on the other side. and No, I didn't do any of that. Near death. Should have been dead. All the times that I almost died or should have died and I would have gone off into, into eternity in hell. Or being saved and backslidden from God, almost dying, almost drowning one day. And if I would have drowned and died at that point in time at uh, Gardner's Lake in Connecticut, I would have gone to heaven. I was saved. But I would have never gotten any crowns. I couldn't sing, wear a crown, wear a crown, wear a bright and precious crown, if I had died that day. But thanks to the Lord's mercy and great and his great works and his wonders, I am living today and I've got crown. Marvelous things did he in the sight of, our, of their fathers in the land of Egypt. The Jews are to look back and see what God has done for them. What are the Jews teaching their children and their congregations today? If I were to stop any Jewish little boy or girl and say, Hey, hey, tell me the story of Ruth. Sit down and tell me what you know about Ruth. What could they tell me? Tell me what Joseph did in Egypt. On the first day he arrived, what could they tell you? And you know that Joseph is the greatest type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know that Ruth is in the line of the genealogy of Jesus? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, what am I going to stop and, go to, uh, and put a pin on a map to the nearest Baptist church with that pin within five miles and stop every child that comes out of that and, and sit down with them and tell me who plays for this ball game? How many Academy Awards did that knucklehead get for that movie? Huh? I bet.
that you can tell me the, the person's name and their number on their jersey rather than tell me who the 12 disciples of the Lamb is. I bet you couldn't tell me that the 24 names that are found in New Jerusalem. Oh, but you could probably tell me the whole cast of a movie. You can tell me what year, if you're into coins, you can tell me what year coins are more valuable or which stamp is, 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 is desired of you and desired by stamp collectors. In the field of Zoan. Now that's a new name. Zoan is in Egypt. And you've been given more information. Not only did it happen in Egypt, it happened in the field of Zoan. Hmm? Little Jewish boy and girl. So the, what were the plagues of, of uh, Egypt? Oh, wow, good, you know it. And what field was it done in? Be a good trivia question. He divided the sea. Okay, back to this little girl and little boy in the Sunday school class of your modern liberal church today. What was the name of that sea? You know what you get for an answer? See you later. <laughs> I got a bag of candy and a little a little whistle. That's what I got in Sunday school. What was the name of that sea? And cause them to pass through. The Bible records that it was dry ground where it should have been mud. And he, God, made the waters to stand as a heap. They were under water, but not in the water. And Paul writes to him in uh, Corinthians that the water was over them, the mist. They were actually baptized, and they didn't go through the water, but they were baptized. How's that for your water dog? Uh, uh, from ADE, I guess. Why should I let you into heaven? Well, I was baptized. And God would say, ah, ah. Give them a duck call. You're not saved, but... Listen, Israel was saved before they went through the Red Sea. Don't you know that? They were already redeemed. After they were redeemed out of Egypt, then they went through the water. You know what happened to those that were baptized and then were not redeemed? They drowned. Fed the fishies. In the daytime, also, he led them with a cloud. That's a pretty particular cloud that every day it was there and every day it was before the children of Israel. That's an interesting cloud. That's not all. Watch what happened to this cloud at night. And all the night... With a light of fire. Can you picture that? You picture this fire in the sky. Talk about a UFO. It was not a UFO. It was G-O-D. you imagine? You know, being out there as a Jew, as your sweetheart, and, and, and it's like, the sun's about to go down, and you and your sweetheart, you hold hands, and you watch that cloud turn to fire. And those early rises, you would watch that fire turn to a cloud. And you better have your manna. Because once it became a cloud, it melted. Oh, wait a minute. You mean the manna melted not when the fire, but when the cloud? Isn't God wonderful? Isn't his works mighty? He claimed the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink 
as out of the great depths. And Paul says that that rock was the Lord Jesus Christ. Out of a flint, the Bible records. If there's one rock you ain't going to get a drop of water from, it's a flint rock. Go ask your, your people who make lighters for a living. Flint is the driest, hardest rock. It makes sparks. Isn't God wondrous? Wasn't God great? Shall we go ask the, the, the Sunday school adult class of your Baptist first, second, 1400 million quadruple hike, church? HD, DD, dum dums, church? Which rock did, did that water come from? I don't know. We're going to have a concert Friday. You want to go? Barbecue chicken? He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. Now let me ask you a question. A stream of water came out of that rock, but the Bible records that that rock followed him. Hollywood couldn't even make a picture like that. How do you, how do, you do that? How did that happen? Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God, not television. Then they sin. Yet more against him, God, by provoking the most high in the world. Let me see God and I'll believe. The Jews didn't. And they saw God from when Moses turned that rod to a serpent. All the way crossing that Red Sea. And they still didn't believe. I have had the people tell me, oh, if I see God, then I'll believe. No, you won't. The Bible says you won't. By the way, the Bible says that God told Moses, you can't look upon me and live. God's presence was with them. He told David that I have dwelt in the curtains. You mean all the time that tabernacle, God was in the, yes, he was in the presence of Israel. And go back and read just the book of Numbers and see how they reacted to God. Read the wilderness journey. We're thirsty. We're hungry. We're thirsty. We're hungry. We're thirsty. It's your fault. Why was that? Because they didn't teach history. Wait a minute. We were thirsty back there, and God said, throw a tree into the waters, and we drank. So, God, we're thirsty again. What are you going to do? That's not what they did. They didn't remember. When I had this bout with this boil, I said, Lord, you've taken care of me many times. How are you going to do it this time? Not that, oh, Lord, you can't do it, so I'll have to go to a doctor. No, 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 no. God, I'm going to see how you do it this time. I remember what God had done for me. And it's not only you, it's people that you know who are Christians who God has also helped in your life. That's why you should be in a Bible-believing church, because when they, you should have a testimony night at least once a month in the church, so people can say, this is what God has done for me, and then you can turn around in your life and say, hey, look what God did for them. Look what God's done for me. But he can't handle this problem. No, 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 no. And they tempted God, wow, in their heart by asking meat, Exodus 16, 2, for their lust, James 4, 3. They didn't ask for meat because they were hungry. They asked it for lust. Now, that's not a Baptist church today in 2014. I don't know what it is. You better be careful what you ask God for. Better not be according to lust. 
And don't you tell, don't you dare tell people, oh, if you do it in Jesus' name, you're going to get it. Really? I can do things, all things through Christ which strengthen me. Really? I can go on top of the Empire State Building. I can put a cape on me and put a big ass on my on my chest, and I can go fly in the name of Jesus. As I flap my wings all the way down and end up on the street below, we get run over by a Greyhound bus. Everybody looks around and says, what an idiot. And I get, and I stand there, and I'm standing before Jesus Christ. Jesus, how are you doing? I really love you. What happened? What happened? You misplied the scriptures. You didn't study to show thyself approved on the God of man, rightly dividing the word. Where'd you get the idea to do that stupid thing? You better, you better take the context of the scriptures before you, you, you claim them. Yea, they spank against God. They said, can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Wow. You mean all the things that God has done for them? And that now they, oh, Lord, we want a banquet. Lord, we want a church supper. Lord, please stop the rain for our church supper this weekend and Saturday, please. When a farmer is praying, Lord God, I need rain. I need to, for the crops. My family's starving, and they want to have no rain over there because so they can eat chicken. You get one people praying for rain. You get one group of people not praying for rain. Wow. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? God provided his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that we may be saved. What else more do you want? Well, we want to have a movie night. Behold, he, God, smote the rock. Oh, wait a minute, that's not, you know, I got a mismark there. Let me change that. That's, that's Moses that smoked the rock. Yes, I'm a Bible marker. That the waters gushed out and the streams overflow. God gave him water. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? Listen, God has been taking care of him. God took care of him. God gave him their needs. And they turned around and said, we want more. We're not happy if one person gets saved. We're going to go and get 2,000, 3,000 people saved. And we're going to do it out of our own lust and just say this prayer. Now look, they're saved. And this is all a history lesson. The Jews in the wilderness and the, and the Egyptians that also went with them did not remember what God did for them. Therefore, the Lord heard this and was wroth. You mean asking lustful things and not remember what God has already done for you in your life will make God angry with you? You better believe it. So fire was kindled against Jacob, and the anger also came up against Israel. And God passed judgment. You know if God did that today in the church? If he did that too. You would, have to, you would have to get a burning permit from the fire department before you had church service. I mean, if that happened today, there would be no question if cremation was right or wrong for the Christian. Because they'd be cremated right away. What's the husband and wife team that lied against the Holy Spirit and God in the book of Acts? Boom, dead. There are sometimes I sit in some of the churches I've been in and I say, God, I wish you did that again. Not all, not all that are in a Baptist church are saved. Don't you believe that? And not all preachers are saved. Why did it happen? Because they believed not God. 
You will burn because you, you have not believed on God. Did you get that? You will burn because you did not believe in God. Trust not and trust it not in his salvation. You will burn because you have not believed in God. You did not trust in his salvation. The way, the truth, and the life. You believed in whatever else you wanted to do as religion. Did you get that? Did you get that you will burn for not doing it God's way? Now on the radio show, somebody called, oh, What about those people with the bullhorn? They say, You're going to go to hell. Tell me I'm going to hell. Yes, you will go to hell if you don't do it God's way. See, they didn't tell the whole story either, the liars. Yeah, I said go to hell. You go to hell. But I also said because you didn't trust Jesus. Let's get it right now. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven, God fed him. God gave him water. God took care of him. And they still rebelled. You know, there are, there are Christians today that are big backslidden. Because they asked for something from the Lord, and it was for their lust, and God gave it to them, and then they took off from them. Oh, God, please give me this house. Please, Lord God. And for their lust, God said, okay, here it is. Well, the mortgage is high. i got to work another job. i got to work on Sunday to pay for the mortgage. I guess, God, I can't go to church. But you gave me the house. You better go back and read James chapter 4 very carefully about prayer. You better ask God if your prayer is a rightful prayer. And had rained down manna. Micah 7.14 Upon them to eat. And given them the corn of heaven. They were hungry and God gave them manna. You know what it said at one point in, in, in the wilderness journey? That they loved. It. They, uh, I'm so sick and tired of manna. Manna cakes, manna steaks, manna this, manna that. I'm tired of manna. You know what people say about the Bible? I'm tired of the Bible. I don't want to keep reading and reading and reading. I'm tired of church. You keep going and keep going and going. But they were hungry, and that's what God provided. Man is the Bible. Man did eat angels' food. So here's a question. Do angels eat? And what did they eat? Angels food cake. <laughs> That's where they get the name. Did you know angels food cake comes out of the Bible? Psalm 78 verse 25. There it is. Imagine a person who does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Make angels food cake and then die and go to hell. It's right there in the box the whole time. Didn't you try to find out where that came from? I wonder what other Bibles say that is. This, this is a note. He sent them meat to the full. You know, there were some that did not get full because they went too late and got it. But God provided manna for, for Israel that all the manna was there would have filled their, all their bellies for that day. And yet some did not get filled because they went too late. Or maybe they were just lazy. You know, God wants you to have a full life. And you not going to get it. Doing what God told you to do. You come up empty, but it's a full course. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven. Oh, he directs the weather patterns? Well, see, it's it's the north and the, the, the cycle and El Nemo and El Quinco and, and, and no, it's God. 
You want a proper weather forecast? God is going to blow the wind down this way. And the Bible says he causes rain, he causes snow, he causes hoar frost and all that. They never give God the credit on the weather channels. You ever notice that? Sometimes they even say it's Mother Nature. Well, I don't want to be bad, and I'm going to say it because I like to say it. If, if there was really a Mother in Nature, every 28th day of the month, it would be storms, okay? For about a week. If there was a Mother Nature. And his power, he brought in the south wind. I don't know, understand what that does for weather. He rained flesh also upon them as dust. And feathered falls, that's the quail, like the sand of the sea. You go back and read that. Numbers chapter 11. And he let it fall in the midst of the camp, round about their habitation. In other words, not only did God bring the quail, he brought the quail right there where they were. Can God provide a table in the wilderness? Oh, yeah. In your tent and everywhere else. So they did eat and were filled. And he gave them their own desire. That's a deadly verse there. Do you know that? You know, sometimes God will give you desire, even it will kill you or make you go afoul. God may answer your prayer with a yes, but you may not want it as a yes. When you pray to God, you better ask God, is this a proper prayer? Because your prayer may turn you away from God in loss of rewards. It may get you out of the church for the rest of your life. They were not estranged from their lust. They were in lust of that wilderness journeys. But while their meat was yet in their mouths, The wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. Why? They weren't thankful. They were too big. Let's hurry up, gobble down the meal on the first day, the only day that America has for, for Thanksgiving, and then let's hurry up and turn around and watch the football game. We're going to have the Lord's Supper today in our church, but don't you dare judge yourself. Judge not, least you be judged. Just go ahead and take it. And the Bible says that some were sickly and some were even asleep, dead. America wastes food. One day you may not have food to waste. For all this they sin still. This person died in their lust. They died in, in sinning against God. And they looked at his like, That was him. I can do it. Nothing going to happen to me. And believe not for his wondrous works. Here's this rock that's following him. A complete oddball of nature, a rock spilling out water, following them. Lord, I want some more food. You know what church's attitudes are? I'm rich, Revelation 3 said. We have, we have no need of nothing. We don't need you, God. We'll take care of ourselves. You just stay outside. Therefore, their days did he consume in vanity, and their years in trouble. Not doing what God told you to do, and not giving God the blessing, and not thanking God will give you years of trouble. 
So one of your troubles may be you're not thankful. You're not looking back at what God has done in your life. You're not looking back what God has done in your church. You're not looking at what God has done. That may be one of your troubles. When he slew them, then they sought him. And they returned and inquired early after God. You know how you want you you want a revival in America? Go back in the book of Acts and find out what bought revivals. Persecutions, uh, martyrdom, prison. That's what brought re revivals. You know why people won't ask for patience of the Lord? Do you read what Paul says? You know what? You know how patience come? Tribulation. I had a past, I don't know who it was, whatever how I heard it, tape, live, or whatever it was. Don't you dare ask for, for patience from God. Because you ask for that, tribulation will come. Wow. And God can't get you through the tribulation? And they remembered that God was their rock. And the high God, their redeemer. Sometimes when you got judgment going on by God, it does turn people to the Lord. When that tsunami hit Japan a few years ago, I wonder how many missionaries went out there and witnessed. I wonder how many came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. You're not going to have a revival in America. Why? Because you got ATM machines. You got plastic credit cards. We are a rich, wonderful nation. We don't need God. And we're going to stop there, pick up the rest of the chapter, Lord willing, next time. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his return.